Hello, my name is Tim Tucker, Chief Instructor for the Robinson Helicopter Company, and I'd like to take a few minutes talking about safety notice number 32, titled High Winds and Turbulence. Safety notice number 32, flying in high winds or turbulence should be avoided. A pilot's improper application of control inputs in response to turbulence can increase the likelihood of a mass bumping accident. If turbulence is encountered, the following procedures are recommended. One, reduce power and use a slower than normal cruise speed. Mass bumping is less likely at lower airspeeds. There are two reasons why mass bumping is less likely at the slower speeds. First, at the slower speeds, the pilot is less likely to encounter a less than 1G condition. Secondly, at the lower air speeds and the lower power settings, the thrust on the tail rotor is less likely to induce a right roll. Two, for significant turbulence, reduce air speed to 60 to 70 knots. We purposely chose the word significant in describing turbulence rather than the more normal, moderate, severe, extreme because we want the pilot to determine what's significant for them. For example, a pilot who learns to fly here at Torrance Airport early in the morning, 20 knots of wind would certainly be significant. Whereas a pilot that learns to fly, for example, in Hawaii, 20 knots of wind may not be that significant. We want the pilot to determine what's significant based on their experience. Three. Tighten the seatbelt and rest the right arm on the right leg to minimize unintentional control inputs. Some pilots may choose to apply a small amount of cyclic friction to further minimize unintentional control inputs. Four, do not over control. Allow the aircraft to go with the turbulence, then restore level flight with smooth, gentle, control inputs. Momentary airspeed, heading, altitude, and RPM excursions are to be expected. You're not going to be able to maintain airspeed plus or minus 10 knots, or heading plus or minus 10 degrees, or altitude plus or minus 100 feet. So don't even try. Just allow the helicopter to be bounced around in the turbulence. Actually, a helicopter will handle the turbulence much better than a light airplane will because that light airplane has all the surface area of those wings for the turbulence to act upon. Five, avoid flying on the downwind side of hills, ridges, or tall buildings where turbulence will likely be most severe. The helicopter is more susceptible to turbulence at light weight. Reduce speed and use caution when flying solo or lightly loaded. This is especially true of R-66 pilots. So R-66 pilots need to understand that when flying solo at less than half a tank of fuel, you're substantially lighter than the same situation in an R-44 because of the difference in the weights of the two engines. However, in the R-66, you can fly 10 knots faster. So R-66 pilots especially have to slow down when flying in turbulence. In November 2016, Robinson issued a service bulletin for both the R-44 and R-66, which adds a yellow or precautionary arc on the airspeed indicators from 110 knots to V and E. Speeds above 110 knots are not recommended except in smooth air. For aircraft manufactured prior to November 2016, a placard stating, do not exceed 110 knots except in smooth air, should be placed below the airspeed indicator. One of the main points of this safety notice is to try to get pilots to slow down in high winds or turbulence. I strongly encourage pilots to periodically review this and all the safety notices which can be found in section 10 of all the pilot operating handbooks and on Robinson's website, www.robinsonhilly.com. 
Thank you very much and fly safe.